Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be answering all of your questions that people asked when I did my last Instagram Ask Me Anything. I actually had quite a few questions come through and to be honest I haven't even taken a chance to look through and read all of them. So I'm just going to go through them today and answer at random and hopefully I answer some of your questions if you are one of those people who asked me a question. And this is just so you guys can get to know me a little bit better and so I can touch base with you and all of that kind of stuff. So if you have any other questions you'd like to ask me, please leave them down below in the comments as we go. Today's video, obviously I'm not going to be on camera as I'm usually not, but I will be sharing with you just some perfume eye candy and some other things like that. So if you want to just listen, you can listen. If you want to sit there and have your coffee and just look at some perfume eye candy or whatever while you listen, that's perfectly fine too. This will be a good video to listen to if you have a drive to do or a cleaner house or something like that. So yeah, without further ado, why don't we jump into it? And if this is your first time on my channel and you are interested in perfume, a little bit of organization, home, luxury, lifestyle, decluttering, fashion, whatever, clean with me's, that kind of thing. If you are into that kind of thing, then consider subscribing and feel free to head on over and follow me on Instagram. And now let's get into the questions. Okay, so we'll start off with a perfume question. How many sprays of perfume do you wear on average? So actually, I never really paid attention, but once I started actually paying attention to how much I was spraying, I spray quite a lot of perfume. I thought that I was somewhere in the ballpark of like four to five sprays, but I realized I'm actually more like closer to 10 and sometimes above 10 depending on the perfume that I'm wearing but I like to put a couple like behind each ear so one behind each ear one down the front of my shirt I try to avoid my front neck area just because that part of your skin is very sensitive especially if you're exposing yourself to sun you don't want to be putting a whole bunch of alcohol and god knows whatever else on that sensitive part of your body so I just spray it down the front of my shirt I also put one on the inside of each elbow and I'll usually just kind of at that point do a a quick ch -ch -ch all over myself and the front of my clothing and that usually does it for me but it usually amounts to about I would say eight to ten sprays and then if it's a very very light perfume or I want to be extra or I'm going out in a large group of people I will even spray more than that let me know down below by the way how many sprays of perfume you do the next one is kind of a random one it is what is your favorite shower gel and favorite perfume for date night so my favorite shower gel I honestly don't have a favorite but right now I'm just using literally Irish spring <laughs> which you can get from Walmart and drugstores it's like three dollars and what I like about it is I think it's actually made for I think it's actually a man's um, body wash but it's antimicrobial and it gets your armpits squeaky clean and it makes me feel very fresh and very clean sometimes I will just use my boyfriend's body wash um, so I'm really not picky I will use pretty much anything that gets me clean so once I'm done with the Irish spring I don't know what I'm going to purchase next and my favorite perfume for a date night honestly right now right now at this moment my favorite perfume for a date night is probably hot couture from Givenchy it's I kind of switch, I go back and forth. I don't have one that is like my solid go-to. I also like Armani Code Satin. But yeah, probably my favorite at the moment is the Hot Couture. The next one is what combination of body lotion, shower gel, or scrub do you like to use before a perfume? So actually, I don't have a combination. I am a nighttime shower person or a nighttime bath person. So when I'm going out during the day, I haven't showered yet that day. Like I haven't washed myself or put on any new lotion or anything to my body. And I kind of like it that way because I don't like the scent of my body lotion to interfere with the scent of my perfume. Some lotions actually can really make your perfume smell really funky and not every lotion goes with every perfume so if i'm going to layer i like to layer the same scent so for example i would layer the boom boom cream or the bum bum cream whatever it's called with the shirosa 62 those two i would layer together but i would never put the boom boom cream chanel or something like that it just wouldn't work so i usually use a fragrance free lotion as my go-to and i just like something moisturizing so i don't i don't really layer very often i'm not much of a layering person i like my perfume to have its own scent and i don't like anything interfering with it the next question is about cleaning. What cleaning anti-dust products do you use? I'm so tired of dust in my house. Girl or guy or whoever, I feel you. <laughs> um, I live in Canada, as many of you guys know, so in the wintertime there's always so much dust because the heaters and the vents are always blowing. We also have a cat. She doesn't shed that much, but anyways, there's always a little bit of dust, it seems. And honestly, I don't use anything to like prevent dust or fight dust specifically. 
I was using only vinegar and water to clean my entire house and that is still my preference however my vinegar and water cleaning bottle I had like a really nice glass bottle I dropped it twice in like the same month and smashed it on the floor and I took that as an omen like okay Alithia just try something different so I did go out and buy an all-purpose cleaner a Windex all-purpose cleaner that does surfaces glass um, metal everything that's what I'm using right now and I don't really like it because it has a strong chemical smell and I don't like I don't like using harsh strong chemicals in my house so I'm definitely gonna go back to vinegar and water that is like my mainstay it's non-toxic it's environmentally friendly it doesn't hurt my pet my cat it doesn't stink um, so yeah I'm just gonna go back to good old vinegar and water and really the key honestly to keeping on top of dust is just to clean frequently I wipe down the surfaces in my house every single day it sounds very almost like OCD or too much but I just really like having a clean house so literally every single day I will go through and I will dust all the surfaces in my house it takes like two minutes I just like it that way because I like a clean house so that's really the only way to combat it is you know change out your filter in your furnace and um, clean your surfaces a lot <laughs> Another question I got is related to handbags. So a couple of you saw my Dior book tote that was sitting in the background of one of my photos and this person asks, how do you like the Dior book tote? Do you find it useful and comfortable to wear? So yes, so I have I believe the large size book tote or I think it was the only size that there once was. They've now since come out with a couple of other smaller sizes but this one I think I have is the large size. Honestly, I don't find it super comfortable you would think by looking at the bag that it would be a great everyday bag or a great like travel bag, airport, even beach bag, overnight travel bag, just because it is a large tote and it looks like it would be very functional. However, after I got it, I realized it really is not that functional because you can't really fold it up. It's not something I would feel comfortable bringing in an airport or on an airplane with me because it's made of like fabric. I'm not exactly sure, but it's not leather. Like it's not easy to clean. And it is something I think that would hold on to scuffs and dirt and I think the handles are definitely going to age pretty quickly just from holding on to it. It also doesn't have an over-the-shoulder strap. I don't find it comfortable to wear over my shoulder like in you know underneath my arm. It's just not as comfortable and functional as I thought it was. That being said, I still absolutely love it. It is beautiful. The embroidery is absolutely stunning. It does hold a lot. It is a little bit heavy and it can be a little bit uncomfortable if you are going to be carrying it for a long period of time, but I still really like it. I think it's gorgeous. It's something that I can see myself wearing um, you know, throughout the summertime, just going for a shopping day or something like that. Wouldn't travel with it, but definitely would take it out shopping. The next question is what is your most complimented perfume ever? This is a tough one because honestly you guys I don't go out in huge crowds especially since the you know what hit. My channel started at the beginning of that basically so I haven't really had a lot of opportunity to go out in large groups and see what's going to get me a lot of compliments and I'm kind of a homebody to begin with. So the scope of my compliments comes from like my boyfriend, my daughter, and people that I see at work, which would be patients and coworkers. And I don't wear a lot of perfume to work because I'm not really supposed to. Um, also, I wear perfume to the gym, but people at the gym don't really come up to you and you know get you to take off your earbuds and tell you you smell good. So I don't really know, to be honest, like what would be the most noticeable or the one that people appreciate it the most, but I have gotten a lot of compliments on my Delina exclusive. Back when I had Delina exclusive, that one got me a couple of compliments. Um, I also have gotten lots of compliments with clean skin. That one is one that I wear to work a lot and I always, always have patients tell me that I smell nice, which is really good. The next question is about editing photos and videos and it says I'm your new subscriber how do you edit your pics slash vid looking so soft with a powdery hue so the key you guys is nothing fancy increase the brightness decrease the contrast and then increase the shadows a little bit as well just try it try it on your Instagram photos try it on your videos if you make videos make the brightness go up make the contrast go down and then bring the shadows up a bit and it will just make everything look soft and cloud like and fluffy that's my key and that's how I edit all of my photos I don't use a specific filter even on my Instagram if you ever see a picture of me and it's like or a picture of whatever in my bedroom or something and it's a really nice soft light looking photo those are literally the only three things I've done and then sometimes I will throw on Valencia filter next question how do you make sure your perfume lasts longer in summer days honestly I 
don't do anything differently. I just wear my perfume. I think what helps perfume last longer in the summertime is just wearing a perfume that's long lasting. Like for example, Coco Mademoiselle and my Chance perfumes like the Chanel Chance Eau de Toilette, those ones last a decent amount of time. Flora Botanica lasts a decent amount of time. Delina lasts a decent amount of time. It really depends on what perfume you're wearing. There's just certain perfumes that just don't last, like Chanel Chance Tendre, beautiful, but it just doesn't really last. So it doesn't matter whether it's winter, summer, fall, it just doesn't last that long on me. So I don't really do anything different. It just really comes down to the perfume itself. The next question is how do you keep your home so neat and clean and without any junk? So as you guys have probably gathered, if you watch my channel, I like decluttering things. <laughs> surprise <laughs> I declutter everything not just perfume so I think people really were like taken aback at first on my channel when I would declutter perfumes so quickly like I would get them I would think they were great and then you know literally a week or two later I was like eh, I don't think I need this one and people were kind of like not sure how to take that they were like okay do I trust your review are you being honest are you just hyping it up for the sake of it like people didn't get it but the thing is Purchasing perfume, and I know I'm taking this on a different tangent, but purchasing perfume was a new, different hobby for me that kind of came out of nowhere, and I started getting perfume in abundance all of a sudden, but there was still this big, big natural part of me that is a minimalist and likes to not have too much stuff around, and I don't like things to accumulate, and I also want everything that I have to be a 10 out of 10. I love it, or else it doesn't stay. So anyway, that's just like a little bit of context, but I have been decluttering and living fairly minimally for years. I started my minimalism, if you want to call it that, um, journey about six years ago. I read the book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo, and it really put things into perspective and gave me some tools to be able to declutter my wardrobe, my shoes, my house, and I started a decluttering journey that is still ongoing and basically I have just kept those principles with me so I don't have junk drawers I don't have boxes lying around that have random stuff I have nothing in storage the only stuff that I keep in storage in my basement is like seasonal so like a shovel um, an extension cord to plug in my car when it's cold um, what else my daughter's sports equipment which she obviously needs suitcases you know things that you will use but don't need to be sitting out all the time that's the kind of stuff you'll find in my quote-unquote storage room but I don't have like stored old you know bags that I'm not using or clothes that I'm not using or random knickknacks or decorations or anything like what you see in my house is what you get and it just brings me so much peace and calming to know that I don't have a bunch of random stuff laying around in places because even if you can't see it right now, you know it's there and it causes you a little bit of stress. Actually, I need to go through and do a little bit more decluttering because just because how life is, you, you will accumulate things. You will have things sent to you, gifted to you. You purchase things that you later on maybe regret and can't return. Um, you get new clothing. You find out that certain pieces don't work for you. Um, you know, it just it's part of life, right? It's an ongoing process. But I've also kind of trained my daughter to be like that. Not intentionally, but she's she's grown up most of her childhood. You know, she's 11. So six years ago, she would have been five. And so she's kind of grown up around that. She's never seen the house a disaster. She's never seen a lot of extra stuff lying around. She's never seen the example of hoarding or clutter or whatever. So she's very, very good with helping me keep the house organized because that's just the standard that I've laid down for the house, I guess. So yeah, I'll probably do a little bit more in depth about that because I could probably spend a whole video talking about minimalism and keeping your house neat and clean but that's basically the gist of it your favorite perfume my favorite perfume changes month to month i do have like all-time favorites which one of them is definitely miss dior eau de parfum 2017 version another favorite that i have loved for a really long time is alien from mugler what else i really love luby rouge like i have a few that are like kind of my top favorites but my current obsession would be versace crystal noir the eau de toilette for sure what is your perfume wish list? Okay, this is a good topic because I have not been buying perfumes lately. Most of my extra money has been going toward other items. I've been getting a little bit more handbags and um, shoes and kind of revamping my wardrobe a little bit. So I've been getting more clothing. Um, so I do have a little bit of a perfume wish list. And 
a couple that are kind of at the top of my list. One of them is Rose Cherie from uh, Guerlain. However, that would be a blind buy. I used to have a decant of French Kiss from Guerlain, which has been discontinued, and everybody says that Rose Cherie is basically French Kiss, so I'm not really sure how I would feel about it. Apparently, it's also also a little bit almondy, and I'm not an almond lover, so I'm very nervous to buy that one. It's very expensive. I don't live anywhere near a Holt Renfrew or a Guerlain counter, so I cannot go and smell it. So if I get it, it's going to be blind, um, and it's $430. <laughs> so that one I'm thinking about but I really don't want to get it and hate it. Also, I really want the Eau de Lingerie from Guerlain. That one is a powdery, musky um, iris vanilla. I've smelt it before and it was just heavenly. So soft, so feminine, very subtle, something that you could just wear anytime, anywhere. And I'm really looking for that sort of just everyday, soft, feminine, powdery, anytime, anywhere kind of scent. So that's kind of at the top of my perfume wish list at the moment. Do you keep your perfume boxes? Sometimes yes, it depends on the perfume. If it's a very high profile, expensive perfume that I think I could possibly one day sell, I will keep the box because people like to get a full presentation. So for example, with Baccarat Rouge, I kept the box. With Delina Exclusive, I kept the box. Um, so there's certain perfumes I will. For the most part, I don't because perfumes are meant to be worn. I don't really plan to sell most of them or put them in boxes or whatever the case is, and it just takes up room. So that's part of that whole clutter, keeping my house neat and tidy thing. I do not like having stuff in storage, so I don't like keeping a bunch of perfume boxes sitting around because most times I will not ever use them again. So somebody asked me if Olympia has been reformulated. They said that my bottle seems darker. So this is a pretty common question that I get whenever I show a perfume that has a darker juice. Basically, most perfumes will darken over time, especially if they have woody notes, vanilla notes, um, if they're a little bit more gourmand. Usually the fresher perfumes don't darken that much, but almost every perfume will eventually change its juice just a little bit once it gets a little bit older. So my Olympia is two years old. I think it's, yeah, I think it's exactly two years old now. So it still smells perfect. It still is really good. It's, you know, long lasting and everything. But yeah, my juice is darker just because it has aged a little bit. So the next question is another question I get a lot. Will you be doing a shoe or bag collection video? So yes, I absolutely will. Um, I'm really happy to know that my audience, a lot of my audience, is also very interested in shoe collection videos and handbag collection videos. So I'm really happy that I share some interests, um, some common interests with my audience because I definitely want to make a handbag collection video. I'm just kind of working out how I'm going to do it. Also, it's going to take me a really long time because I have a few. And I'm just kind of trying to decide, will I do, you know, certain brands or lump them all together? Will it be a one part or two part? Like there's just a lot. Plus I have a couple coming in the mail and I wanna make sure I have those first before I get to that video. But definitely, I will be doing a handbag collection video. It's one of my most requested videos actually. And shoes as well. That will take also a lot of work and a lot of time because I have a lot of shoes and I would like to model them for you guys and show you how they look and things like that, so. The next one is, have you tried Armani Magenta Tanzanite? No, I have not. That's the new Armani Privé one in the pink bottle. I would really like to try it. Looking at the notes, I don't know if it would be something I would absolutely love. It's, I think it could be iffy for me, so I don't really know if I want to blind buy it, but um, that, one might be worth, that one might be worth checking out for sure. So I will let you know definitely if I do. Okay, the next question is, what is your guilty pleasure? And I don't really know how to answer that because I don't really know if any of the things I take pleasure in would be considered like, you know, a guilty pleasure. Um, I really don't know. Is handbags one because I spend money on handbags? I mean, handbags definitely probably is a guilty pleasure. I love, I have a bit of a handbag obsession at the moment. I also like to listen to hip hop in the gym. Not that that's a guilty pleasure, but like a lot of people would never think that I would listen to, you know, like explicit hip hop songs or something, but I do. I That's like my favorite genre, hip hop and dance. I like to listen to that. Um, other guilty pleasure, I really don't know, to be honest. The next question is, can you make a video about your gym essentials or favorites? So I, I'm not sure if you're referring to like perfume or if you're talking about clothing, shoes, that kind of thing. Definitely, I can do that. I can actually do, you know, a what's in my gym bag, what do I wear to the gym, what's essential for me, what do I always bring, and the perfume that I would wear. So maybe I will do a video like that. 
The next question is, what nursing specialty do you work in? I am a brand new ER nurse and Frag head. Okay, so hello. I think it's Bailey who asked that question. Um, I have worked in med surge. I've worked in the recovery room. I've worked in emergency. And since the Panini hit, I'll just call it that, so for the sake of not getting demonetized, um, since that hit, I have been cohorted to one facility because they didn't want people going back and forth. So I have been in rehab, convalescence, and palliative since that started and that's just where I am right now so I'm not sure if that's where I'll stay forever I really do miss acute care I love the adrenaline I love acuity I love using all my skills I we all fear it to an extent I mean we all get kind of nervous to an extent but once you're in it it's so exciting and it's such a rush and I just love taking care of stuff you know I like taking care of business and I like when things get going and things get a little bit more high octane that's like where I thrive um, so I really do miss ER and I miss also even medical surgical but I do love where I work now too I do love end-of-life care I do love palliative care it's a very special relationship that you develop with the families it's very fulfilling as well it's an honor I think to be with somebody and their family during their final days it's it's actually really an honor and I also like convalescence because you know all your patients are going home all of them are going home they're there to get better and stronger and so that's very fulfilling to see people get better and go home too because sometimes you know working in other places that doesn't always happen so yeah I just like I like all different parts of nursing I think it's much less stressful to work in my area right now like I can say that I'm not stressed out going to work every day I don't have anxiety going to work every day when I worked in eMERGE I was nervous every single day going in and even on med surge I was nervous every single day because I just never knew what was gonna what I was walking into and that did definitely take a bit of a toll on me like mental health wise but usually once you got there and once you were in the swing of things everything was okay but waking up in the morning and going like every morning I had a pit, a pit in my stomach and that's not a good feeling either you know so anyways um yeah nursing is interesting <laughs> The next question is where do you buy your designer bags? So actually a lot of my bags were gifted to me, which I'm really grateful for by my boyfriend. Um, so he has purchased a lot of them for me. Um, a lot of the times I will get them online directly from the store. For example, my Louis Vuitton bags, I think most of them have come directly from the Louis Vuitton store. A lot of them, however, are sold out or you're on a waiting list or they're just not available. So then I do look to the secondhand market or places like Farfetch, Poshmark, things like that. You do have to be a little bit careful though because there's a lot of really good fakes out there so you do have to be careful where you are looking for secondhand items if possible i do try to get them new or i like them to be authenticated from a third party the next question is what is your dream pair of shoes honestly i think i have my three dream pairs of shoes already which i'm so grateful for because two years ago i didn't have any of them designer shoes i really like i always wanted a pair of louboutin heels i did not want the socate like the tall ones they were too tall for me i think mine are called the i'm not sure how to say it. is the pigal pigal full i'm not sure how to say it they're the next one lower than the socate and I find them still very high and a little uncomfortable, but I really love them. That was my first dream pair of shoes. Like I was over the moon when I got those and my boyfriend bought those for me, which was really nice. I also always wanted a pair of Valentino Rockstead high heels and I have those now. And I also really wanted a pair of Dior slingbacks and I have those now. So those were like my three dream shoes. Um, I still need a pair or need. I still want a pair of um, Hermes sandals. The can't remember what they're called just the flat Hermes sandals the leather ones can't remember what they're called Ooh, I kind of would like a pair of the YSL pumps like the high heel YSL sandals with the little YSL in the heel I would really like a pair of those I also wouldn't mind a pair of Jimmy Choo with like the little um ruffly thing on the heel I think that's about it for now the next question is how do you deal with anxiety so I could do a whole different video on how I deal with anxiety but first of all I'll tell you guys I do have anxiety it's not debilitating at this point <laughs> it has been in the past definitely and I'm not sure if I've been conditioned to be anxious because I did have a very stressful period of my life and I don't know if I have maybe some residual almost PTSD from that I've always had I've always struggled a little bit with depression and anxiety in my past yeah I could do a whole separate video on this anyways I'm I'm obviously like a pretty happy person and for the most part I'm good but I do also have PMDD which basically means that during my PMS week I actually become like basically clinically depressed for a few days which is it's a really awful thing I can do a whole video on that if you guys are interested let me know if you'd like me to talk about that I don't really get anxious unless it's that week what I have learned is that 
the best way to deal with something that is causing me anxiety or I'm worried about it is to really work it out in my head and to tell myself what is the worst case scenario about what I'm concerned about. So you have to put it into perspective. You have to actually put it down on paper so you can see it. What is the worst case scenario about what I'm worried about? And then ask the question, how likely is this to actually happen? So if the worst case scenario is you, for example, losing your job, answer the question, how likely is it that I would actually lose my job? Usually when you answer the question, how likely is it? It's usually not very likely. If it is likely, then put that, say, you know, it's fairly likely that this is the case. It could be anything. It could be a health problem. It could be a relationship problem. It could be anything. And then write down, okay, if that worst case scenario happened, what is my plan? A, B, and C. What would I do? Because sitting here worrying about it doesn't fix anything. It's not going to change the outcome. All it does is rob you of today's happiness and peace, right? So yeah, it's basically a lot of cognitive behavioral stuff. And if it is just irrational, like you're just irrationally feeling anxious or you feel like you're panicky for really no reason, that's something you sometimes cannot rationalize. You just have to get through the moment, do something to get your mind off of it. And also tell yourself, just tell yourself, you know, this will pass, this will pass. Yes, this moment sucks. Yes, I feel anxious or paranoid or panicky or depressed or whatever it is in the moment. It's okay to own that. I think the thing about people is that we always are trying to feel better and we can recognize when we don't feel good and we're trying to, we don't like that, obviously. We don't like when we don't feel good. So people are always trying to feel better. Sometimes you just can't feel better in the moment. You just can't. It doesn't matter what you do. You can't talk yourself into a better mood. You can't talk yourself down from feeling worried about something. Sometimes you just can't do it. It's okay to say, okay, this sucks. This is how I feel. And just own it and let it be. Let it be a day. Let it be an hour. Let it, you know, if you have to sit at home and curl up in bed and cry or <laughs> stay at home and mope and feel awful and depressed and lay there and sulk, that's okay. Let yourself do that, you know, and it will usually pass. Obviously, if it's something that isn't passing, then you need to seek help. And by the way, don't take what I'm saying as professional. You should always consult your doctor and whoever. Sometimes you just have to let yourself have a moment and own it and just say it's okay. Like, yes, I'm anxious, it's okay, it'll go away, it'll pass. Yes, I'm whatever, you just have to let yourself have that moment and it will pass. Another thing that I find really helps is if you do have something you're concerned about and it's keeping you up at night, write it down on paper, get it out of your head, especially if it's something that you are thinking, oh shoot, I need to do this tomorrow or you're, you're, you can't sleep because you're thinking about all the things you need to do tomorrow. Make sure you've gotten them written down on paper or put them in a reminder in your phone. When you get them out of your head and onto paper, out of your head and into your phone, then you can sleep because now you don't have to lie awake thinking, oh gosh, I hope I don't forget this. Oh shoot, I can't forget to do this. Don't even, don't do that. Make yourself lists. That way it's out of your head. And when you go to sleep at night, you can focus on just sleeping. If it's on paper, it's as good as done. If it's on paper, it's as good as done. So do that with every area of your life. Strategies to get through things that are bothering you, strategies to get through issues that are going through your life, things that are worrying you, put it on paper, write down what it is, write down what you're going to do. Once it's on paper, then you can stop worrying about it because now you've done your due diligence, you've done everything you can do, you've created a plan, and then you can stop worrying about it. So that's another tip that I have is just put it all on paper. Every single thing, put it all on paper. All right, so the next question is a little bit lighter. It is Kaylee Vanilla 28 versus Dolce & Gabbana The Only One Intense versus Good Girl Supreme. Definitely Kaylee Vanilla 28. <laughs> That's my personal preference. That is my favorite between all three of those perfumes. And I'm kind of giggling because the girl who asked that, uh, she frequently writes me and asks me my opinion on a lot of perfumes and a couple of those specifically. <laughs> so yeah, that's cute. But Kaylee Vanilla, definitely. So you guys, that is really it. I think this video is long enough. So I hope that you enjoyed hearing my answers to some of these questions. So I'm going to end the video for today, but definitely leave me any questions down below and let me know if you'd like me to do any other videos along the topic of anxiety or PMDD or anything like that because I could talk for a long time about that and I can tell you some of the things that have helped me, some of the supplements that I take and things like that. And yeah, thank you guys so much for listening and so much for being here with me today. I hope everybody has a great week and I will see you all very soon in my next video. Bye.